So welcome back to our Irish getaway. Now in this episode, Stu has a problem with LPG. We visit this dual purpose watchtower. You'll be pleased to know that we have our first shower in two weeks. We come across an abbey on our journey. We eat way too many blackberries. And finally, we go to Kinsale where we will start the Wild Atlantic Way officially. Welcome to Getaway Geese. We are Stu and Jane, and with Harry, our Ford Custom Auto Camper, we share our adventures. So join us in this RF Guide series to campervanning in Ireland. So every morning, I look at what we're doing for the day and possible options, and I just type in um, all the coordinate names, or numbers rather, off Google Maps. And then uh, in the favourites, I then tend to then edit the favourite and give it a name. So in this particular case, I want to go and get some LPG. So I'm just going to put, obviously, just garage or something like that. Garage A, garage B, if I've got a couple of target garages for, if I'm unsure, I'm going to get something. So this morning we're going to do a laundry run. Um, it's a shame they have these 24-7 revolution um, outdoor washing machines and they're great because they're everywhere but unfortunately you can't put your own washing powder in I've got a perfume allergy so I can't use them so we're hoping that we can just find a normal laundry so we we're coping quite well with the clothes it's been two weeks so everything's fairly well ready to be washed let's say so we'll be all reset and ready to go again after that so that's our uh, two weeks worth of laundry We've uh, put the sheets in as well, obviously, and bedding. Um, the orange bag's just got all the uh, the washing stuff so, uh, to be used. So we're off to find a laundrette. When I do the laundry, um, I use those, the colour catchers, just in case the um, colours run. But to be honest, most of our clothes are so well washed that they we don't get colour run. But just in case, you never know. And then my favourite things are these can see them. They're sheets. Um, you can get fragranced ones. The ones I get are non-fragranced because of my perfume allergy and they're just sheets and you just literally drop them in. I think it's one sheet is equivalent to one wash and so it saves carrying um, liquid around in the back of the van and they're just easy. I mean I think there's about 40 washes in those, so they're good, they're really good, so that's what we use. that's how that should be used. I certainly wasn't doing that, I couldn't even get the coordination right. So we've just left uh, Cove Motorhome Park, we've been there for two nights, it's been really good isn't it? Yeah. It's uh, so definitely worth worth coming here, The um, it's 10 euros for 24 hours and 48 uh, and a maximum of 48 hours stop. Uh, we didn't pay anything uh, as the machine was broken and there was no second machine so uh, everybody this weekend didn't end up paying a thing so that's 20 uh, or 40 euro uh, 20 euro saved rather for the for the two nights um, but really good yeah so you you'd, uh, we went to the heritage center which was fantastic and then yesterday we had uh, sunday it was a sunday we went out into uh, cove um, town which was quite a buzzing town wasn't it uh, we went for a meal, uh, they had a nice fantastic meal, um, but it was uh, so a, a great place to come to and you know the Motown Park is in a, a real prime spot, uh, overlooking, managed to do some fishing. So put this on your list to, uh, to, to travel to in my opinion, even if it was just for one night. So we were very <laughs> fortunate to meet the locals. Uh, we parked in between uh, two lots of friends. Uh, and so to meet they stood outside our van but actually they were really lovely and they only lived like 20 minutes away but they come yeah. down and meet the fact there was about four vans all together over the yeah. weekend of friends they yeah. obviously come down a place to be and why not i'll be honest with yeah. you yeah um, 
They're really nice and the accents are so quick. And it's where you all go in the like the people's up Galway now, they'll be in this side. Yeah. You know, when you talk, and we probably do the same, you tend to talk so fast. Too fast, that, yeah. Yeah, but they tell us some great stories. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Because we're out there talking to 10 o'clock at night and, yeah. and so one night, you know. Late so. night for us. Yeah. They drink, they were drinking, they were drinking a bit, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't keep up with them, I wouldn't. I didn't even try. I was going to say you had to. They tried, yeah. <laughs> I didn't try. <laughs> I, knew, I knew I'd die otherwise. Yeah. He said, I saw you go fishing. He said, uh, Did you catch anything? She said, Yeah, mackerel. And he looked a bit put out at first. He said, Bloody hell, he said, I've been here coming down here for four years trying to catch a fish. Never caught anything. He, he, you, you come here and So I felt a bit of a professional just in that little moment. <laughs> in my own head. Yeah, a legend of your lifetime. A legend in my head. In your head, yeah. So today we're driving into Cork City, but fortunately we failed to find a self-service laundry as they were all drop off and collect. So we need to rethink what we're going to do. The next task is to fill up with fuel and also LPG for the first time on this trip. Any idea? I don't know how full it is. I think we're into about 70 euros, I'm guessing. 68 euros. So this is where things start to get really stressful as Stu has completely forgotten that he needs to use an EU adapter, which he's never done before. He does have one with him, but we think Harry's hidden it. And now Harry's playing hide and seek and he's winning. Game over. Did you turn the gas off? Stand back, everyone. Is it, is it meant to do that? No. We live to tell the tale. So that didn't go. <laughs> it didn't go as well as we thought. He's going to come back now, completely stressed out because we couldn't find the, the adapter. I'm fairly sure it shouldn't be all spurting out like it was but um <laughs> that was stressful. <laughs> God should there be that smell of gas? No I think the adapter wasn't on tight. Uh, but I forgot that you need the Euro adapters so I'll get there and the cylinder is not gonna fit. So then I've got to find my Euro adapters. Two Euros basically 180 Euros that's all for two litres. So it's done. She left as ever. I always get laughed at. I don't know you both it. Chocolate. Oh, of course. You'd have to have it. No, I oh, will. No, you've We've had a stressful it. morning. Yeah. It's been a bit of a pain not being able to find a self, um, self-serve laundry, apart from these revolutions, which are absolutely everywhere. So if you haven't got perfume allergy, you're not going to have a problem with laundry. It's uh, everywhere. We then make our way south towards Kinsale, while we try and work out what we're going to do about the laundry. But we first stop off at Charles Fort South in Kinsale for a photo stop, but we decide not to go in. The fort was built between 1677 and 1682 and was a star-shaped fortification that is designed to resist an attack by cannon fire. The site is now operated by Heritage Island, so one we'll have to come back to and visit. 
the Spanish Armada landed in 1601 and occupied Kinsale for a while. As we drive towards Kinsale you can see lots of connections to Spain with the coloured cottages and pubs aptly named. Now we decide not to stop at Kinsale and looking back that was a mistake as apparently we missed out on a great place but fortunately you can't do everything can you? We've booked into a site for one night for the first time to get the laundry done and use the facilities so that was the focus of the day. So we head up to a lunchtime park up instead at Kinsale Head. and we park at the Lusitania Old Head Signal Tower Museum. This tower tells two historical stories. It's only five euros per person and there is an outdoor cafe on site. The first story is about one of 81 towers that were built during the Napoleonic Wars and they all had line of sight to each other, to pass messages of any invasion or sighting, and this was tower number 25. They used a ball and flag code to send messages from the mast. Following its refurbishment, it also acts as a memorial to the Lusitania that was sunk just 40 miles off the head of Kinsale by a German U-boat in May 1915. This links to the Heritage Museum we saw at Cove in the last episode. The Memorial Garden houses a couple of artefacts including this lifeboat frame from the ship. This sculpture wraps around the replica's signal tower. And it depicts the story. crew and passengers that were on board the Lusitania. The bodies and survivors were all brought back to Ireland from various ships and lifeboats that reacted to the sinking. We must get that washing sorted, so we're off just up the road to Garrettstown House Holiday Park. The Holiday Park was mainly a mobile home site, but it has some touring pitches too. The site is mainly closed now for the season, apart from the odd tourer like ourselves. The park sits in what was once a grand house, coach house and courtyard, and the structures were built in around 1702 for the Kearney family. Some of these buildings are being reused by the park, but unfortunately others are abandoned. Right, that took a fair old while to lay. So this was the bakery of the Garrett's Town Estate and large ovens on either side of the fireplace were used to churn out breads and other baked goods. It has a kids playground for stew and the all important shower block and laundry rooms. Anyway, we get hooked up and I go and get this lot washed and dried while Stu charges everything, because we have to make most of the site. We're just leaving uh, Garrett's Town Holiday Park, where we've uh, ended up staying one night on a site. Turn right now. Surfers are out. <laughs> Proceed four kilometres on the current road. So today we want to have a good walk and suck in some fresh air. So we're going to head to a place called Cork McSherry, 
where we have identified a headland walk. We start to enter the Cork McSherry estuary, which we are sure is full of wildlife. We stop at Timmerleag Abbey, which is a ruined Franciscan friary and it's on the banks of the Argadine River. The current remains are from the 14th century, although it sits on a site dating back to the 6th century. The location was an important religious learning site, as well as having significant train links to Spain in its day. It was burned down by the British forces in the 17th century. Harry is in the small car park at the front next to the public toilets and although you can't stay here overnight there is fresh water if you need it. We continue to the village of Court McSherry. So when we came into Ross Lair, we, uh, St Helens, uh, we had a look at Kilmore Quay. Uh, we did go back over to, which is north of there, to um, Wexford uh, to get my sim. Well, basically, we've, we've sort of tracked this way south through Ireland, through Dungarvan, down through uh, Cove and Cork, uh, Kinsale, and uh, where we are right now is that we're at Court McSherry. Um, just gone through Timmer League um, and then uh, I'm not quite sure where we're stopping tonight so we'll be in this area um, and then we'll start to hit probably um, the more wilder parts as we get down to um, um, Mizzen Head etc and we're off on a modest circular walk around the cliff tops So this is the first time the red jacket's come out, so that's good for me because I know I can see him when he's got that on. It's when he changes jackets I can't find him. So we drove round there to Timmer League this morning and we spotted some, uh, well a lot of lovely houses over there with views across to uh, over to this side of the estuary. So this is called Wood Point Light. Not hugely impressive, but essential for boats to mark, I assume, the headland. It's an ideal spot for uh, swimming, I would say. I'll beat a blackberry. We're not getting far on a walk because really we keep going across blackberries. Mm. 
and so we're just having our five a day as we walk along. I just need to find some custard now. <laughs> That's such an old man thing to say. Jane's at about a punnet. I've probably had half a punnet. So watch tomorrow's video when we're real. This walk's taking forever. <laughs> Picking blackberries. Come on, you're going to be ill. Bloody hell. It's supposed to be five a day, not five pounds a day. So I'm just trying to work out what, uh, what this is. Is that a sweet turnip? Sugar beet? Could be sugar beet. You think it's a swede? The layers of the rock vertical there. So this is called Fuchsia Lane. And that's the reason why. It's lined with these fuchsias, I, don't know, I presume they're wild fuchsias. It's just lovely to walk up there because you, you're covered on both sides with a hedge but it's all fuchsias as you walk up. It's a beautiful walk. A slightly different fuchsia. Well that fresh air was just what we needed but we're off to our next park up. But we'll show you this in the next episode so stay tuned as the place is really special. So thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video then help us grow the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. And we'll hopefully see you in the next episode of Our Travels in Harry.